It's green for go. They're racing. He says go. He says Tara. And Tiger Tara rolls away from them on the home turn. Here comes another big boil over. Equine Athletics is about its best. The king is in the castle once more. This is in one race. The rest are almost in another post. She is a star with a capital S. It's going to be a triple treat. A miracle three-peat. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed history here at Menangle. What about that? It's getting right up on the sprint lane and it's going to bolt in. Hello and welcome to the Sunday session. My name's Greg Hayes. I'm going to look at harness racing in the state of New South Wales and even talk about a New South Wales horse in Victoria on the podcast today. Of course, this is part of the Sprint Lane podcast series for harness racing New South Wales. Great to be with you. What about the stunning win of Kanina Provlima in the Ballarat Cup for Kerry Ann Morris and David Moran on Saturday night? Fantastic performance and uh, looking forward to where Kanina Provlima goes next. Kerry Ann, pretty keen to get to the Hunter Cup with Kanina Provlima and the horse just continues to get better and better. Uh, Raced well through the Inter-Dominion series, progressed to Bathurst, competed in the Shirley Turnbull, went to Shepparton, just got nosed out in the Shepparton Cup and then got a big one on Saturday night when it picked up the Ballarat Cup. So that's great for New South Wales. Uh, Racing at Clubman Angle on Saturday night was exciting too. The track was on fire, really warm weather. We saw some very quick times, including a 1.48.6 run by Hi, My Name Is Jeff in the free-for-all on the night. The feature race was the Adore Me Stakes for the Mayors. It was won by It's Ebony and Ivory for Luke McCarthy and Jack Callaghan. Everyone left the pegs except for Jack, and in the end, it was the winning move. So what's on the podcast this week? Who are the guests? Well, first up, I'm going to speak with Kerry ann Morris. I caught up with her after she'd left Ballarat on Saturday night. She was making her way to Shepparton. Um, I did record the interview, and the phone reception in Country Victoria is a little bit iffy, but it was great to speak with Kerry. I hadn't spoken to her since leaving Sky in 2019, so it'll be good to catch up with her after the win of Kanina Provlima in the Cup. I need to speak with Cam Hart this week after three winners at Club Angle. He drove Hi, My Name is Jeff to victory, but he also drove uh, I Love a Bubbles and Sahara Sirocco. So after a treble... I thought it would be worth speaking with Cam. Now, fingers crossed, because I know Cam's booked on a flight to Tamworth to to drive there on Sunday night. So hopefully we can make it all work and get him before he gets to the airport. What else is on the show? I'll run through the Menangle Express in an attempt to find a winner or two going forward. Stravinsky is one that I earmarked on the last couple of programs that it was one to follow. It won the first last night. It was the favourite, but um, we'll see if we can find another couple of runners to follow. I'll also nominate my driver of the night in that segment uh, from Clubman Angle. Uh, Mr T is back with another two tips. He got a winner last week. I missed with my two, so he's starting to close the gap in our tipping challenge. And I saw Harness Racing Australia CEO Andrew Kelly interviewed by Brittany Graham in regards to the Tab Eureka, and he made a couple of interesting comments in that interview about changes to the race and slot holders ready to push the button about inviting horses, and I thought I'd do some digging of my own and see what I could find out in regards to the Eureka. I, I can definitely confirm the race is going to go from 2,400 metres and it'll go back to the 2,300 metres this year at Menangle. I think that makes a bit of sense. You get a nice long run down the back straight at Menangle from the 2,300 metre start point as it is. I'm hearing that prize money is going to increase, albeit marginally, to fix an anomaly with the fifth versus sixth finishing position. So the world's richest harness race is going to get even richer. And I'm also hearing as many four, uh, as many as four slot holders have already progressed their negotiations to the point of being ready to announce their runners, but they've all been asked to wait until after the Hunter Cup to not take too much limelight away from that great race. It's really interesting because I remember speaking with Jamie Dernberger-Smith about the slot that Summit Bloodstock and Aaron Bain Racing have, and they were adamant the way to do it was wait as long as you can before locking in your runner. Yet there are some slot holders who like to get in early and try and lock up the best horses when the risk then becomes the horse comes off the boil. Speaking with trainers like Nathan Turnbull and Brad Hewitt, they are all for the early invite because it allows them the chance to plan their campaign moving forward and target the Eureka and have it marked as the grand final. You would have to assume better be the best would be in negotiations. Captain's knock beat him in the Breeders' Challenge and won last night first up, so he would have to be in people's thoughts as well. Interesting, though, that there are up to four slot holders ready to go with their picks, and the Hunter Cup's still two weeks away, so... 
we will have to wait a little bit longer to find out what horses are in contention. Time to get into the weekend's racing review. Let's start with Kerry Ann Morris after the win of Canina Provlima in the Ballarat Cup. It's Canina Provlima in front into the straight. It's Canina Provlima. Catch away beyond the light. Canina Provlima's kicked away though. It's Canina Provlima. Canina Provlima's clear. It's no problem for Canina Provlima. And it goes all the way with David Moran and defeats. Second beyond the light. Third seer Art. And Catch a Wave has run fourth. Then Pete said so. Well, Canina Provlima put the writing on the wall that a big win was just around the corner after a strong run in the Inter Dominion. Then went to Bathurst for the Shirley Turnbull. And then last week in the Shepparton Cup was great. But tonight in the Ballarat Cup, picks up the big one. Kerry Ann Morris is the trainer and she's joining me to have a chat. Congratulations, Kerry Ann. Well done. Uh, thank you, Greg. Yeah, really, really happy. The horse is just absolutely firing on all cylinders at the moment. Um, yeah, he's, um, he's a horse that, you know, he comes to the stable um, a few months ago. And um, he's definitely got better with the racing and... Um, yeah, no, he's done a bit of travelling, went to Queensland and um, was really happy with his efforts up there. And um, then he went to Bathurst and made a small mistake, but um, was probably looked like he might have nearly had the race shot when he made a mistake. And then um, then we decided to, to step him out and come to Shepparton and um, really put a, a, a good run in at Shepparton. And then, yeah, it was good to see him get the win tonight. So tonight, he... he... He's just got that really good gait speed that he can put himself into a position in races now. You can use him at the start, and he's still got a kick at the end. Yeah, it's probably, you know, our horses, at, when we race them at the angle, we, we don't tend to use their gait speed a lot, um, just because, you know, it can be taxing on them. Um, and I think just that style of racing at Menangle has kind of got him stronger, uh, and he's definitely racing better from it. Um, when we drew... Um, a good barrier last week. We thought would would use his gate speed and, and put himself into the race, and, um, and I think that kind of helped us tonight. People knew that you know if he led, he was going to hold the lead, and and um, he got away with murder. And um, yeah, it was, he, he was able to kick home in a in a really strong half. And he ran away from them on the line. Like, um, you know, there was one or two making ground from the tail of the field, but halfway up the straight, he just found another gear. Yeah, he got him in 26 flat um, at Ballarat. So um, I think, as I said, with that really soft, soft leak and soft um, first half, he, um, he definitely had something up his sleeve towards the end. And it is a bit of a front runner's track, and, um, you know, he, David did a really good job. Did the um, what did you make of his run when you drove him last week in the Shepparton Cup? Because he got oh so close and and just just got grabbed on the line. Yeah, no, I was right with him last week. Um, as I said, he, we used him out of the gate, and um, he got a little bit keen on me in a couple of the couple um, down the back, and um, probably took his toll on him in the last fifty. And um, obviously, Curly James is you know. A really nice horse as well, and um, he had a really good good run in the race, and, and just snapped him up right on the line. But um, you know, I was wrapped with his run last week, and um, yeah, no, it was great, great run again tonight. What about the musical chairs? You drove him last week, but opted to drive the stable mate tonight. Is that just being fair to both sets of owners, or is there there a reason for the change? Um, yeah, I said um, Robert and Josh normally are our stable drivers, and. Uh, they stayed in Sydney tonight and they head to Camworth tomorrow. And, um, I'm staying at David Moran's place and I just thought, um, Pete said so, he's a really nice horse and I hadn't driven him for a really long time and um, he's got a real soft spot for mine and um, I was happy to jump on him and, and let someone else have a go off for being a problema. Um, they're both really nice horses to drive and um, I don't think it really would have really mattered who drove him. What about uh, the run of Pete said so tonight? You must have been happy with that because he looked to be in a bit of trouble at the quarter, but all of a sudden he found again in the straight. He, he was hitting the line nicely. Yeah, um, for our Pete said so, he, he does struggle to get around the corners and he was not unhappy with him at all. Um, I think going forward, we're going home, he'll have a little bit of a freshen up. 
they'll both be known for the Hunter Cup. Um, hopefully, hopefully Pete said so can get a run as well because they're both great travelling partners. And, yeah, no, I really wasn't unhappy with his run at all. In Australia, he, he come again and I think he got beat 12 metres on the line and um, he... His run was really great. So both go towards the Hunter Cup if, um, if if they can both get in. Will you then look to come back for the sprint races in Sydney as the Miracle Mile draws closer? Um, we just kind of take it up week by week, but um, they probably will be you know on the on the list. These horses are um, horses that have done a lot of travelling over the last six months, and um, you know it, it, it can sometimes start to take a bit of a toll on them, but they seem to be um, handling it really well at the moment, and um, we'll, just, we'll just let the horses tell us where we go next. How are you enjoying being back driving? Like, we, we don't see you in the sulky all that often. You've had a couple of drives in the last week or so. How are you, how are you enjoying that? Uh, it's enjoyable when you're driving horses like uh, Cabina Problema and um, Pete Sensoe, so, because they're just beautiful horses to, to get on, and... Um, you know, yeah, it is. It is something that you know I, I put step on, and um, Robert and Josh really are the main stable drivers, and um, I love the training side of it. Okay, and and if they both got a run in the Hunter Cup, I assume that that Rob and Josh would would head down to Victoria to to drive in Hunter Cups. Yeah, I think I'd definitely get kicked off <laughs> if they both make the race. Well, c- congratulations with the win tonight with Kanina Provoleva. Huge, uh, huge win for the stable. Great to see you pick up another feature race and well done. Thank you very much. That time of the week where I have a look at every race on a Saturday night at Club Angle and tell you what I saw to see if we can spot a horse to follow in the future. Race number one was over the mile. The favourite in the race was Stravinsky at $2.20. Jala Neal galloped early and was out of play. There was speed early from Dark Terror and Sheffield Sparky, but it was Dark Terror who protected the inside early before letting Stravinsky run to the top. On the pegs behind Stravinsky were Dark Terror, Arden's Reality and Sight to See. The running line was Sheffield Sparky, Major Statement, Titan Raider and Rico Shea. The speed was really good. Seaton Grimer, as he tends to do, kept them running once he found the front. Quarters in 27-7, 28-8 and when he dashed through the third quarter in 27 seconds, most of his rivals were struggling to go with him. Dark Terror was doing its best in second but the rest were out of play. Up the straight, Seaton kept Stravinsky going. He won in 150.1. Dark Terror was second but Big gap back to major statement in third. Not too much from the rest. Jalen Neal gets a mulligan after getting things wrong at the start. Keep following Stravinsky. He's going to win more races with his racing pattern. Race two, again over the mile. The favourite was Captain's Knock at $1.22. There was some speed in this one with Mr Robin Hood leaving hard inside the fave. They battled it out for over 400 metres for the lead before Captain's Knock got to the front in a fast first quarter of 26-2. Not sure Cam Hart or Mr Robin Hood was ever too interested in holding the lead, but was more making the fave work, considering it was first up from a spell. Because of the early burn, they went Indian file into the back straight, and they settled down this way. Captain's knock, Mr Robin Hood, Celestial Gossip, Shades of Heaven, Fortunate Son, our Uncle Jim, he better step aside, Ryan's Gangster and Freddie Singh. Second quarter was 28-3, and it was Ryan's Gangster that started the running line towards the cages. Freddie Singh got his back. And he better uh, he better step aside. Came off the inside as well. Twenty seven four through the third quarter, and Ryan's gangster got up outside Captain's Knock, who um, was good when challenged. Uh, or he left the pegs. He gave Mister Robin Hood a shot. Celestial Gossip was looking for a run. Had to ease around carts to get into the clear. And our Uncle Jim got to the outside. Captain's Knock was able to claim victory in one fifty point one. Probably not the easy victory that Hewitt was hoping for, but definitely on target for the Chariots. Mr. Robin Hood was good after doing the early work. Ryan's gangster held on well after making a long, long sustained run when he started the running line. Celestial Gossip was good. He can win a race leading all the way soon. And how Uncle Jim, I mention him every week in this segment, he flooded home again. He just needs luck to win one. He's obviously racing well. Race three was over the mile, and the favourite in a seven-horse field was Stingray Tara at $2.90. There was speed early from the informed King Tiger as he attempted to cross Boom in the early stages, but Taylor Osmond wanted to hold the front on Boom and did. Josh Gallagher and King Tiger grabbed hold, but there was nowhere to drop in as the other runners quickly found their spots. Marker pegs, boom, Brados lad, danger zone and tuppence, while the running line was King Tiger, Stingray Tara and Joni N. 
The first quarter was 27 seconds. Boom was able to back it off to 29-2 through the second quarter, but King Tiger was up outside the leader, annoying it, and probably got its nose in front in the back straight. King Tiger started to tire as they approached the turn due to the 27-3 quarter, and Taylor Rosman got going on the leader. I wonder if she'd sat up for another 50 or 60 metres, whether she might have made a race of it, because on turning, Boom had set up a good margin, and Stingray Tara came out of the 1-1. just took a while to warm up. And, and really wind up down the straight. Stingray Tara's winning margin in the end was 2.7 metres over Boom. Um, Tuppence got into the clear at the top of the straight and hit the line well, proved that his recent win was no fluke. Danger Zone probe for inside runs and got uh, got one in the end to finish fourth. This is his level, only five metres was over the first six horses. 27-7 final quarter, 151-2 over all. Race number four was the lower class mares race on the card. I'll have a bubbles was the dollar oh nine favourite, shortest price favour of the night. There were a few that wanted to get forward here. Dance edition from the two was driven out under the stick. Uh, Nelly Big Time was out hard from the middle of the line and just as well was launched from the widest draw with Harry Ross in the sulky. Uh, the fave I'll have a bubbles wasn't a part of the early war and understandably so. They ran a 26 seconds first quarter. Oliver Bubbles was able to push forward and work to the front by the time they had run 600 metres. Just as well was able to push forward um, and then came nearly big time. Dance edition and sugar for my honey. So that was the marker pegs. The running line was Jessica, Kill or Baby Shark, Hall Stitched Up and Ohana Dancer. They backed off the speed through the second quarter to 29-4, but Cam Hart got going as they approached the cages and just as well behind the leader and Kill or Baby Shark in the 1-1. They both looked in some trouble which forced the hand of Jack Callaghan on Hall Stitched Up, who came out three wide. The race was over at the top of the straight, with everything else struggling behind I'll have a Bubbles. 27.5 and 28 seconds up the straight, was allowed to throttle down over the final 100 metres, and they still went 150.9. Hall Stitched Up had the momentum up down the outside in the straight and held on for second. Sugar for Mahoney had to ease from the marker pegs to the widest runner up the straight and got home okay. Not too much can be said for the rest. Just as well galloped, but was well beaten at the time. Kill or Baby Shark looked gone on the turn and managed to hang on to fourth. Uh, race number five, that was the fast class of the night, and the race lived up to its name. Hi, my name is Jeff, was the $1.35 favourite, but he didn't get it all his own way in front. Second fave, Mac Da Vinci galloped just before the starter said go and easily lost 25 metres. He was beaten less than that, so his run was super. But back to the to the rest of them. The croupier launched off a middle draw and crossed before South Coast Arden was released. And then hi, my name is Jeff, who was caught wide and pressed onto the front with Gavin Fitzpatrick on South Coast Arden leading back to try and restrain it wasn't until the 1,000 metre mark that the fave got to the front. So they ended up settling down like this. Hi, my name is Jeff, South Coast Arden, the Croupier, Port-au-Prince and Balraj on the pegs while the running line was line-up, Alter Orlando and Star Major and then Mac, Mac Da Vinci once he tacked back on. 28 seconds through the second quarter and then 26.8 was the third. No one made any moves because of the solid tempo. Turning for home, line-up looked to be in trouble. Outside the leader, hi, my name is Jeff, couldn't sneak away from South Coast Arden, who was probing for a run on the inside and finally got one. The croupier was able to work around carts and get into the clear while Mac Da Vinci was asked to go back towards the pegs in the straight to try and run on. In the end, hi, my name is Jeff, held on narrowly. I wonder if Gavin Fitzpatrick had attempted to hold the lead, whether the result would have been different. Line up was so brave in this class and held on for third, and the croupier way up in grade got fourth. 27-5 home, 146, uh, 148-6 overall. Hi, my name is Jeff, loves Manangle and is going to be a major player in the big races coming up. Race 6 was the wide open Adore Me Stakes for the higher rated mares. The favourite was Teresa Love at $4.20. Robert Morris launched Little Bliss off the wide draw and it was able to get to the top before they left the straight but Morris quickly released Arden's Delight who rolled to the front. First quarter 27-5 and they settled on the pegs like this. Arden's Delight, Little Bliss, Teresa Love, It's Ebony and Ivory and Heavenly Holly. The running line was Total Diva. Sporty Dancer, Ideal in Dreams and Magic Moment. They backed it off to 29-3 in the second quarter, and that should have set it up for Arden's Delight. Little Bliss looked to be in some pain approaching the turn, so Trainer came away from the pegs with Teresa Love, which left its Ebony and Ivory to take its spot. A Sporty Dancer was launched from the 1-1, and Ideal in Dreams got the perfect cut up into the race. 27-5 was the third quarter, and I was expecting a bigger kick from Arden's Delight, who rolled off the inside. 
Sporty Dancer and Ideal in Dreams looked set to challenge before its Ebony and Ivory got through on the inside. Smart drive by Jack Callaghan. He had pushed for an inside run in an earlier race and hadn't got the result, but this time he snuck through after being patient. Sporty Dancer was good in second. Um, needed Total Diva to take it a little bit further. Arden's Delight gripped on for third but had every possible hope. And Ideal in Dreams, well, I was expecting a really big kick from her after racing with cover throughout. Little Bliss battled on well after look after looking beaten at the top of the straight. Home in 27-1. Um, they did go 151-4, 54-6 the final half. Big win for McCarthy and Callaghan. Race number seven. The favourite was Firestorm Rev in, in this one, and he was heavily supported. They put up $12.00. When the markets first went up, he started at $3. There looked to be some speed in this one on paper, and there was. Gliding away showed speed, as did Arden's ace. And Major Jealous was pushing early, uh, pushing through early, but was got really rough. Um, it was able to stay in its gear, but then just was holding a Firestorm Red out. So Arden's ace crossed down to the pegs, but... Firestorm Red was still out wide with Major Jealous pushing through. 26-2 was the first quarter. Major Jealous ended up getting to the lead off Arden's ace, but then Firestorm Red kept coming. It took him 700 metres to find the front, and straight away it looked like a race for the back markers. Uh, the marker pegs was Firestorm Red, Major Jealous, Arden's ace gliding away, and Longfellow. So Cam Hart was off the pegs with Sahara Sirocco and kitted to those back in the field to come around him. Last tango in heaven obliged, giving Sahara Sirocco the all-important cover, and Major Bob was 1-2. They tried to back it off, 29 seconds and 29-6, but that damage had already been done to the leader. Last tango in heaven went past Firestorm Red in the straight. Sahara Sirocco came around last tango in heaven and loomed as the one. Arden's ace went back to the inside looking for runs. Major Bob peeled wide. In the end, Sahara Sirocco got the nod. Good drive by Hart. Last tango in heaven held on for second, Major Bob in third. Arden's ace will bob up in a race like this soon with his racing pattern where he leads and looks for cover. Gliding away, never got clear running in the straight. Finished last, but its run was much, much better than that. It's worth following for sure. So that's gliding away out of race seven. And race number eight, standing start for the Trotters over the 2,300 metres. And the favourite was Have No Fear for Will Rickson at $2. When the starter said go, Escape the Pace went up in the air and was out of play. Majestic Trio trotted away for 50 metres and then galloped. So effectively, it became a field of seven. King of Love was extremely slow away, whereas Vic Sun flew away. And so did Sonny G, who worked to the front. Have No Fear stepped safely, worked around the first two and got to the front with a lap to go. They closed up their positions and settled like this. Marker Pegs, Have No Fear, Sunny G, Vic Sun and Monarch Stride while the running line was King of Love, Drop the Hammer and Gunner. Uh, first two quarters, 30.2 and 30.3, so it was nice and comfy for the fave. Speed went on from the half, 28.4 uh, around the side and Drop the Hammer started to tire at the cages. Up the straight in 28.6, gives them a mile rate of 159.2. Have No Fear was held together, never looked like losing. Sunny G held on for second. Monarch Stride pushed through the middle for third. And Vic Sun, who got off the pegs when dropped the hammer, dropped out, finished fourth. Really like the runner Gunner. Um, keep following him at big odds. He goes around at double-figure odds every week. He's going to run a place at big odds or win one really soon. Um, best winner of the night. Very hard to go past a 148.6 victory. Hi, my name is Jeff. Held on in a very fast time. I'll go with him. He's going to be a serious player in the big sprint races, and his early speed seems to be getting better and better. Best beaten effort of the night. This is a tough category. Nothing really jumps out at me. South Coast Arden was good. Uh, Mac Da Vinci, after losing all that ground at the start and only being beaten 20 metres, and the lineup was super brave in the same race. Uh, thought Ryan's Gangster was good, and the stable mate. Last tango in heaven in the seventh had to be driven upside down. Uh, best beaten effort of the night. I'll go with South Coast Arden, um, narrowly beaten in 148.6. And best drive of the night, a tough one. There's two standouts. Cam Hart on Sahara Sirocco, who got off the pegs after the speed burn and got cover, which won in the race. The other being Jack Callaghan on its Ebony and Ivory in the Adore Me, stuck to the inside. It just opened up for him. Um, I'll go with Jack on It's Ebony and Ivory, but there was not much in that one either.
they've reached the quarter pole. Next section was 26 and 8, so they've run this really hard here. And hi, my name is Jeff. is about to open the shoulders, and we're about to see what he's got over the angle mile. Leads the way by about five metres. Line up still there. South Coast Ardens probing for an inside run. The Croupier to the outside, and also trying to run on his star major right out under the arches. But the leader is hi, my name is Jeff. Trying to probe through on the inside is South Coast Arden. Hi, my name is Jeff. It's hi, my name is Jeff. Too strong beat South Coast Arden. Line up in the croupier. Then comes also Balraj, Alta Orlando, Star Major, Porter Prince second to last. Mac Da Vinci blew it at the start. 27-6. They've roared home. They've gone 148 in a piece. Another three winners on a Saturday night program at Menangle for Cam Hart, including... Hi, my name is Jeff, taking out the fast class event. He was super impressive going that 148.6 time. And Cam Hart's joining me to have a chat. Congratulations, Cam. Another big night at the office. Yeah, thanks, Greg. No, it was a great night. And, um, yeah, going into the night, I had a good book of drives. And, yeah, it was nice to get a couple home. Well, let's uh, well, let's start out with the first one. You had Oliver Bubbles. Um, she was super impressive. She, she won as she liked. And she looks like she's got some, some very good... Good ability. Yeah, she got, gave me a great feel um, last night, Greg, and uh, obviously we're won well first up for Jace, and he sort of didn't know too much about her, but a couple of her runs at Albion Park had been really strong, so thought she'd do a pretty decent job, and uh, yeah, she surprised me how well she did that, you know, 50.9 mile last night. She's definitely a mare that uh, hopefully should go get through to the, you know, higher grade mares race. Did you, did you, you, you basically let her throttle down there at the end? Yeah, she did it comfortable. Like, she put on, you know, probably 10 metres halfway down the straight on the field. And, um, yeah, she's going really strong. And there's no need to keep pushing her. I knew she was running a pretty decent while. They went quite hard early. And, yeah, hopefully um, she can shape up into some, some of these better mares races as the carnival comes around. So you think that she will? Yeah, I think so. Off her after last night, um, she obviously put a nice time on the board and felt like she could have went a lot quicker. So um, obviously a lot of great mares around, but um, she's definitely, you know, being in our own backyard, I think she's definitely worth having a crack at it. Now, hi, my name is Jeff, taking out the, uh, the free-for-all for the night. Um, take us through that because... It, look, it, it's been easy for him so far. He's been rolling to the front and just destroying his rivals, but they really made you work for it last night. Yeah, I was super happy with him. Um, like you said, he's had some comfortable wins. Um, you know, he's probably just had a bit of a little a leg on some of the fields he's been in and, and run away quite easily, but it's nice to see him really fight on with one, you know, right to the wire and, and get the job done and obviously post up a great mile, so... He's in a really good spot at the moment. So, were you concerned in the early stages when you were posted a little bit wide? Not too much. I, you know, I come out really quick and and under a hold. Really, uh, I could see Gav wanted to get to the fence on South Coast Arden, so I was, you know, happy to just let them sort themselves out a little bit there and then try and press on. And luckily, it worked out that way. And you know, that first quarter, he's got such good gate speed. He did it under a hold. And, if I really wanted to ask him, I probably would have been able to cross, but uh, it would have been quite a quick first quarter. But yeah, he's um, just got a good good uh, turn of foot and, and high speed. Well, what about at the top of the straight? He, he rolled away from the inside. He gave that run to South Coast Arden, and he got into a dog fight. We know that he likes the fight now too. Yeah, that's right. That was probably the most pleasing thing thing in the victory. Greg was the way he, you know he, South Coast Arden was really coming at him and. He's a tough horse, South Coast Hard, and he was really, you know, grinding up to me. And um, for him to, you know, stick his head out and keep fighting on with it, it was, yeah, really impressive. Like I said, he's sort of done everything pretty easily to date at an angle, but to see him really dig in in a good mile was, um, yeah, it's a good sign going forward. Was Jace there last night or was he at Ballarat? <laughs> no, he was at Ballarat, so, yeah, had the two down there. And, um, yeah, he's got a good team of workers up here that looked after the horses. So, do you think that he's he's going to be a major player in those big sprint races that are coming up in the next couple of months? Yeah, I believe so. Like he's put on, you know, a lot of good times on the board, and you know, it's not all about times. Once you you know get in those quality fields, you need to go to another another level, and it feels like a horse that will do that. I think his gate speed is a big factor as well. He should be able to put himself in a in a good spot, um, you know, more times than not. 
And it, has that gait speed improved through the preparation or has it always been there? I think he's always left the gait pretty well over his career, but um, I think he's a little bit of a quirky horse. And, you know, when Jace first got him, he could get a little bit fired up on the gait. And now I sort of know the horse a bit better. I'm probably getting him out, you know, a little bit better, just climbing the gait a bit and not knowing uh, what he's like. So yeah, he seems to be running it really hard. Um, yeah, I think you've got to really ask him last night. He's a show, you know, crazy gait speed. It wasn't needed for that, but I think it's there if we need it. Uh, your third winner was Sahara Sirocco. This was a really good drive because there was so much speed early. You were off the pegs. You just kitted to, to something from behind you to come around and give you cover, and Robbie Morris took the bait, and you are able to get the beautiful run with Sahara Sirocco. Yeah, it worked out perfect. Um, he's no star. He's just a really honest horse got a great turn of foot when he can have that sort of run. And, um, yeah, it worked out in our favour. There was a lot of speed um, in the race. On paper, it looked like it probably wouldn't have been that way, but uh, it turned out to be a pretty hot first quarter, and that sort of played into our hands. And probably put him in a you know, spot first over that he doesn't really like, but I was you know, confident maybe something might pop around, and, and Rob did, and it worked out in our favour, and the end was too good up the lane. So what were you thinking? Like at the top of the straight, was he feeling like he was the winner when you were sitting in that one-one spot? Yeah, he, he tracked the speed so well. He loves the Menangle racing, and he was yeah, he's full of running. And um, you know, I've sort of won a couple of races at Menangle on him that similar sort of run, and I knew he'd have a great finish. So uh, yeah, he's pretty confident. You know, coming past the cage really. What about Mister Robin Hood in race number two, finishing second behind Captain's Knot? What do you make of his run? Yeah, I thought he was awesome. Um, he seems to be getting better and better every run uh, Jace has given him. And obviously a great horse to beat me. I've got a lot of respect for Captain Stock. He's a, a really nice horse. And um, yeah, it took a little bit of ground off him up the straight in a really quick mile in 50. So yeah, I think he's got a nice future. He's still pretty low grade. So I think he'll go through them quite quickly. And the track last night looked to be on fire. Obviously, nice warm conditions set up. You know, there, there were some very fast times outside of uh, Hi, My Name is Jeff. So it was a nice night for racing. Yeah, it was a great night. It's always nice when summer comes around and they start posting up some nice, nice miles. And, um, yeah, I think most races went, you know, three or four races that went 50, and then obviously the three for all went 48. So we probably haven't got the real high quality horses here yet. Um, once the carnival comes around, they probably be even going quicker. So, yeah, it's an exciting time for Sydney Harness Race. Mate, a bit of travel coming up for you. I uh, notice in the uh, Tamworth form guide on a Sunday, you're, you're heading there. Yeah, heading to Tamworth. Um, yeah, obviously got a good association with Jared Olchin and Tumby Park, um, the Witten. So, they like to, to go up to the Tamworth Carnival every year and to try and set a couple of horses for it. So, yeah, heading up there and, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Mate, what's the uh, what's the plans for you? Will you, if if see your art goes to the Hunter Cup, will you be going down to drive it, or are you going to concentrate on all the big races in Sydney? Yeah, I'm not too sure. I haven't had the conversation with Jace, but um, you know, the Hunter Cup would be a lovely race to win. And I think the uh, the way he went uh, in Ballarat last night, he'd have to be a live chance with a good barrier. So I'd love to get down there and drive him, but um, we'll just have to see what what's on here in Sydney as well. But, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to go down and get back on him. Mate, I haven't spoken to you since the end of Dominion. Um, you know, what did what did you make of uh, that race? Um, it, it was a very tough effort from your bloke. Yeah, it was an incredible run uh, by Swayze. He's an incredible horse. And, yeah, I just love the horse, to be honest, um, the way he fights on and such a tough horse. And, uh, yeah, just leaps the fame was too good on the night. He's a champion horse as well. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's no disgrace going down to, to a horse like that. Uh, yeah, hopefully he's in for another good year come 2024. Uh, Jay said afterwards, after the Inner Dominion, he was going out to, for, for a good spell. Is that still the plans? Yeah, yeah, he went straight out after the Inner Dom final and um, yeah, he's back, back at the bar now, but he, yeah, he had a good you know, four or six weeks off, so um, he'll come back probably in the middle of the year. Um, you know, maybe the spot race something in April, so uh, yeah, that's pretty exciting times for him. Sprint races, probably not his his forte? Uh, probably not. Um, you know, he's probably lacking gate speed. Uh, 
makes it hard over the mile, um, probably against the, the top mile sort of horses like my well, high. My name is Jeff. They probably, probably get the jump on him a little bit, but in saying that, he just had a big season last year. And, um, you know, you can't go in everything. And I think Chase just decided that it's probably better suited to you know go into New Zealand or Perth or you know one of those more long distance tracks. Yeah. And and it's a chance to split his top his top horses up as well. I guess you don't want them savaging one another either, do you? Yeah, that's right. It's always nice if you've yeah, got that luxury of having a few nice um, green circuit horses to be able to split them up if you can. Well, mate, um, congratulations with the three wins last night. All the best of luck at Tamworth, and uh, good luck going forward. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winning. Hey. That's pretty good. Winner! That was legitness. For that, I say, all right, all right, all right. Wow, winning. Bam! Just like that. That's all there is to it. That's, that's all there is to it. A winner! Just like that. I'm the winner! Yes! Yes, time for the update in the tipping challenge. Mr. T got a winner last week with Uncle Craigo winning at Bathurst. We both invest $10 on our two tips on the New South Wales tote. Mr. T is minus $74 since we started. I missed the board this week, so I'm back to minus $45. Time to get back into the black. First up, Mr. T goes to Bathurst, and you have to be very patient because he's Two tips are in the final two races. Race seven, he likes number one, Kissed by a Rose for Nathan Turnbull. Finished second at its past two, and he thinks it can go one better. Race seven, number one, Kissed by a Rose. Second tip for him comes up in race eight, and he goes with a first starter drawn barrier one. Um, Make mine better. Beautifully bred out of Make Mine Cullen. It's been trialling at Bathurst in preparation for this one. And Mr. T thinks it can be forward on debut. So race eight, number one, Make Mine Better. My two. I'm pretty keen this week. I've gone to Goulburn on Monday. Race two, number seven, Carboneer. A first starter for Dennis Day that's been trialling well. Three trials this time in. Most recent, it finished second to Argent Peak in 156.6 at Goulburn. Now, Argent Peak's a three-time winner. Carboneer won a trial on the 30th of December. It beat a horse called Explosive Bronski. Now, since that trial, Explosive Bronski has come out and had two starts at Menangle for a second and a win. So race two, number seven, Carboneer. Looks to be a couple of nice ones in it, including Mickey Be Good, another first starter. It's been trialling well. And Real Tintin, who was my tip from last week, who I thought went okay on debut despite finishing well back. Um, so I'm going to go with race two, number seven, Carboneer. And my other one is at Menangle on Tuesday. Race six, number four, Corlonia Courage. First up since May last year for Chelsea Prothero and Seton Grimer. Trolled really well at Menangle, won in 152.3. Began well, took a sit, then went straight past them in the straight. I think first up from a spell, obviously nice and wound up for this performance, and it should take a lot of beating. Race six, number four, Corlonia Courage. The Fantasy Harness update, Champo 71 leads by 80 points overall from Manning 1990. Mays is a further 85 points behind in third spot. Last year's winner, Will Norman, he's sixth, 235 points off the lead. Good week for me, I'm up to 66th, but still more than 700 points behind the leader. Round eight was taken out by Champo 71, so our overall leader won week eight. It's the third round win of the year for Champo 71 and has had a really solid year. So we're about a third of the way through the uh, the season. Cam Hart and Robbie Morris, they're both going to Tamworth on Friday night at this stage. So captain decisions this week will be a tough one. Big thanks to Kerry ann Morris for joining me on the podcast this week and to Cam Hart who was driving out to the airport. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Hope there are a few winners there for you going forward. Don't forget the huge Carnival of Cups meeting at Tamworth on Australia Day. I've been lucky enough to get to most of the tracks in New South Wales when I covered the Carnival of Cups back in the old days with Mark McNamara, but Tamworth is one that I haven't been to, so I'm looking forward to getting there for the first time. Some great singers in action too, including Adam Brand, so make sure you get your tickets for that one. Can't wait. Have a good week. Back a winner or two, and I'll be back next Sunday with another edition of the Sunday Session.